story here. And then by the time we were finished, we had this amazing opening number that set the tone for the rest of the show. And it's, it's, I'm so happy to hear that you love it so much because I, I love coming out for the opening number because of that. I feel like it's just, it's, it's letting the audience know from the get-go, this is what you're gonna get. Have fun, it's a ride. You I was know? gonna say, so knowing that an opening number has to set the stage tonally, yes. musically, and, and set up a narrative, right? You yeah. have to go somewhere in the story from your opening number. If there were two adjectives, you had to pick that like drive the mojo of that number that you're thinking of in your head. Like this has to do X and Y, or I'm feeling this and that. You have to set up fun. We have to have fun because the next portion of that is anywhere but here where she's talking about, I want to get out of here. So it's kind of that, that, Renee, please. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, my time, my time. My time. Um, you have to set up that whole idea of we're having fun, we have choreography, everything, and then everything kind of simmers, and then we have a whole new situation with see Vivian a little bit more, a, a little deeper into Vivian, really what's going on with her. So for me, I just have fun. I'm in a huge wig, I have 90 clothes on, I live my life. And we all, and it's so much fun because we get to interact as ensemble, we get to interact. And in the show we have some group numbers, yeah. but not a lot, a lot, when we're all on stage. So we get to really have fun when we're on together in those type of numbers. So, so that I, I actually, like, oh, oh, sorry, I want to say ahead. something about Allison's character. And uh, in fact, all of you, what Jerry has done, and it's, it's, it's subtle, and it's very subtle. There's, everyone has a double life. Oh, well, that was my totally. question. Yes. Because I know that ensembles, I love to watch an ensemble. Because you guys don't, you're not tied to dialogue, but you are tied to story in a lot of moments. So I want to know who your two characters are that you've created for that number. Who's wearing the big wig? Like, who are they? Tell me who they are so that when people go see the show, oh. they're like, oh, I know that that girl is the... Oh, I'm ready for you, girlfriend, because I couldn't wait to create my opening character, my, my lady of the night, if you will. So her name's Luciana. Her dream, her dream is to be Paula Abdul. I mean, that's who she aspires to be. So when you come see the show and you see my wig, you'll know exactly who I am because I kind of look like Paula Abdul. And um, our amazing um, wardrobe department actually got me earrings made that say Luciana. True so story. Everyone should have like cold hearted snake yes, up there. No, exactly. That's exactly it. I'm like, that's it. I'm gonna get, uh, that's my dream. You just watch out because I'm gonna be the next Paul Abdul. Um, that's, so that's my, my main character. And then, you know, I get to join the, the beautiful Orfe on Rodeo Drive where I, you know, represent in my Chanel suit. Um, and then, supermodel you know, realness. Yeah, supermodel realness, if you will. Nice. I'm, I'm five three in real life, so, you know, this really is a fantasy for me, so I just enjoy it during that number. And then, you know, um, our act one closer, which is one of my favorite numbers, it's called Beautiful, um, and we get to play the shop girls, led by Mary Pat over here, I'm Mary Frances, and it's just so fun because we, I mean, as women, you know, you, I mean, when I was a little girl, you, I mean, I loved to dress my Barbies and like to play with my dolls and brush their hair. And that's what it feels like we're doing for Vivian, you know, it's so exciting. We're, we're dressing her up and, you know, we're, we're letting her live out her fantasies. So it's a lot of fun and it's a, it's a great way to close act one. So those are my characters. But the thematics are certainly, I always look to the thematics and things like this is that, is that people are people. Human beings are yes. human beings, and you can go from Hollywood Boulevard to Rodeo Drive to the polo match, whatever it is, it always goes back to the heart of who you are as a human being. And uh, Alice, and I have to say, I'm sure she'll speak to it, but what she does is phenomenal. She has a very important character, starting at the beginning, well, we all do, but it, she starts at the beginning, and she's, she's kind of the the sidekick to Eric Anderson's uh, happy man who kind of helps everybody find their dreams and he's like this right. fairy godfather. So talk to us about that, Alice. And go who's, to the work, your, what well, you do start next. start from the beginning. Who, who's your girl in this opening? Well, number? she was set up to be a homeless woman. Jerry said, I was like, I don't want to be homeless. Not a pretty woman. Um, but um, and she's basically a person that's on the streets and she's really good friends with Eric, happy man. Um, and they're just really good friends, but I'm always watching. 
I've known Vivian for a long time. I know she's beautiful, and I know she's going to get more. So I'm actually the eyes and ears. I'm always seeing what's going on in the block. And so that's kind of what I carry with me throughout the whole show. Even as Mary Pat, you got that look. You know, I am, I am pushing her along because I know good things are coming. Even when I'm a nasty sister in top of two in the polo, I still know she's gonna get, she's gonna get her self-love. And I, then I become Violetta in La Traviata. And so that's just almost a reflection of her. She's looking at almost herself. And La Traviata is an amazing opera. If you haven't seen it, go to the Met, see it. Because it's, it's on, beautiful. This, I think yeah. until the 19th or something. I think so, yeah. It's an amazing opera, but in the opera, Violetta dies. And as we know, Vivian lives. But <laughs> thank God, thank God. <laughs> but I mean, Violetta is, is a representation of purification when she dies because she sacrifices herself for love with Alfredo. So knowing that story and Vivian's watching it, it's a purification. And that's why I love Greg Barnes in that white outfit. Because for me, it's not just about women empowerment, feminists, it's about purification. And when you find yourself love, you become pure. And you become a holy person. So, yeah, I just really you may want to, You may yeah. want to rewind I, that I on your iPhone. I just think of the white of purification deep. of just being clean and being new. And so I think that's just so powerful. And as Violetta, I'm the vehicle, a main vehicle, to bring that change around for her, I wow. think. And then I come back to as a homeless woman. And I just sing, ah! And then, I, and then I said, but I, I'm a positive force, but I'm also watching everything and with Eric. So we're, we're, we're two handed. That's yeah. so cool that I think that's very rare that there's a, that there's a through line throughout the multiple, yes. you know, because the ensemble mm -hmm. is required to be the world of every different scene. Right. And I think that that's a rare gift yeah. that you have a through line between each one of those absolutely different characters yes. for your own personal. And Jerry story. was very specific with all of us individually. Um, feature or no feature, you had to know who you were, what you're doing, what's your point here. And so that was the story that I came up with Eric and then where's my journey so everything makes sense. So it's not just, oh, she's going to sing an opera now. There's a through line. You all can figure out where she's going and why she's doing what she's doing and why she's seeing a high C at the end of the show. Right, and the reason because, why it's you, yeah. other than the fact that you can hit a high C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but there's a reason not just singing because she's just singing. Right, that the tracks are... are maneuvered that way, that they're designed that way. By Jared, um, yes, by Jared. Yes. Speaking of design, and you mentioned him, Greg Barnes did the costumes oh, for this show. Gorgeous. Greg Barnes. Amazing. Legend. I mean, Greg. talk about really oh. doing that perfect balancing act of paying the homage to the film and then also making something that really works on a stage because, you know, what you see from 10 feet away, 50 feet away, up in the balcony, is very different than, like you said, the camera close-ups that are happening on film. What's the costume that, and, and the other thing about costume designers is it's all storytelling. They're not just making a garment, they're making a person with you. So what is the costume that you love that like completes a person for you in that scene? And then or if I, since you're always kid, I would say, what's the costume that you feel most kit in? Oh, I have very kiddish clothing. Um, I, I think the thing about Greg, he and I have worked together before, and he's very collaborative, much like Jerry Mitchell and Paula. We, we have a lot of really wonderful people on this show that aren't very precious about their credit and their ideas. If you come to them and you say something to them, they will more than likely incorporate it into their vision, and that's what makes it so stunningly wonderful. I think Jerry specifically with Greg, because Greg and I did Legally Blonde together, and yes, woo, woo, yes, bend and snap. Sorry, well, there you go. But uh, I, I think that what Jerry wanted is, because, you know, I, I have a certain sense of style about me, if you will. You don't and, uh, say. I think that Jerry kept saying that Greg put more Orfe into Kit. Let it be about how kind of Orfe looks. I want the hair to look like the way she wears her hair. And I want the, you know, she wears a lot of leather and studs and things like that. It'll never change, I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, never I Never apologize yeah, for Well, that. you know, that's why a lot of what you see Kit wearing is an extreme, perhaps, music uh, business or in more version of uh, Kit. So it's a perfect blend in a marriage because I think the thing about Kit in the movie, her costumes weren't all that exciting. They weren't. 
my costumes are a lot more exciting. <laughs> and there's a lot more leather, and there's a lot more stuff going on, so I think maybe in another life, Kit tried to be a pop star and just couldn't cut it. So she kept all her clothes, and that's what she wears all the time. But it, it was a collaboration, and I think that Greg was very open about saying, Allison, what do you want to wear in this scene? What would make you feel most like Violetta, or most like, you know, Happy Man's sidekick? Renee, too. Renee, what feels good on you? We're very lucky that way. We have these amazing collaborators who, again, are not all that precious about having their stamp on it. You know it's a Greg Barnes design, so what does it matter to Greg if you say, hey, you know, Greg, I don't really like to wear that high of a wasted acid wash, even though it's 1989. You know what I'm saying? It's just, we've been very, very lucky. Or Faye, you literally stole the words like right out of my brain. See, we're so connected. I'm good like that. I swear to God, I was just gonna say, like, um, Greg Barnes, just like Jerry, it's all about collaboration. And like, I would go into my costume fittings and it would be like a party. I, I, I mean it. We would be in there for like hours just laughing and giggling and I'd try a bunch of things and he'd be like, well, how do you, where do you feel the best? You know, how do you feel in this skirt? Does it make you feel like your character? They all knew Luciana, so they were like, okay, would the Paula wannabe want to wear this? And I'm like, this is it. So it, it's so refreshing, you know, I, I always say, in this business, what I value, you know, sometimes more than talent, more than uh, prestige, is being with people who are authentic and and real. And that is this whole team. And it all starts from the top down. I always say that it all trickles down. And we have Paula, you know, who we're so blessed to have, being women, you know, just sitting up here as women right now, being a woman who who understands and is always there with us at rehearsals. She's like been on the journey with us every step of the way. And, and as actors, I know it makes us feel safe. And then you have Greg and Jerry who are like, okay, what do you think? And it makes you, you know, as a performer, feel like, okay, wow, this- but You're contributing to yes, this. Yes, you're contributing. Just put on yeah, you. And, and they actually care what, what I'm going to bring to the table. And that just makes you want to work harder. And Greg asked me, what is your story? Yeah. Then that's how he built My Homeless Woman, which is based off of Bette Midler in a, a TV a TV show she did when she was a Expand, homeless woman. please? Oh. Yes, yeah, and so randomly he showed me the video and he was like, oh, I'm gonna do something like this. I was like, gotcha, fine, I'm good. But it's all about storytelling. Jerry, Greg together, storytelling. So if it wasn't part of the storytelling, the costume went. Polo has changed. Yes. Oh, Chicago really to Broadway bad. totally changed because he didn't feel it was telling the right story. Same with end of act one, beautiful. Yes. Those yeah. outfits, and, and Greg was like, fine, as long as it's telling the right story and we're on the same page. So Rodeo I think that's amazing. Yeah, Rodeo. There's no, you, Rodeo. Know yeah. you know what's nice, you guys? There's no ego in, involved in our team, which is so beautiful and, 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 and rare, I think. You know, like, like we've all been saying, Jerry's, if, if Jerry has this beautiful idea and he walks into rehearsal, him and I did a lot of pre-production together right, as, as the dance captain. So, you know, I'm, I'm in the show every night, I'm in the ensemble, but I'm also the dance captain. So you know, I'm in charge of keeping the choreographic integrity of the show. So, you know, I oftentimes will be, not often actually, because, you know, we've had so many things going on, but um, sometimes I get swung out of the show so that way I can watch and take notes and make sure that, you know, the choreography is, is still the way it should be. Right, so someone takes your spot on stage. Yes, exactly. One of our audience. swings takes my spot and then I get to sit and be an audience member like you guys and I get to see the big picture you know, and just make sure that, that Jerry's vision is still holding true. Um, so along with, you know, being dance captain, I um, would do pre-production with Jerry. So we'd go into a studio and, you know, he just would kind of put all of his ideas out on the dance floor and we would go through everything together for hours and, you know, create and, and try this dance move and try this. And, and it's, it's, it was so, um, inspiring for me to watch because I saw him throw away some of the most amazing ideas because again it didn't serve the story so I go back to there being no ego you know it's not about like I'm Jerry Mitchell so this look I want to do this and that's it no it's about like oh is that what pretty woman's about and if it's not then we toss it I was gonna ask you about his choreography because I feel like there I feel like you can tell when you're seeing something that is Jerry Mitchell's choreography. Yeah. Is there a, are there signature Jerry Mitchell moves or not a, 
There's a there's a signature it's an energy. No, it's, it's an energy. energy yeah. it, it's also a formation. Jerry Mitchell's brilliance is in his formation, and I. Uh, it's the way that you see a picture, choreography, choreographically, choreographically, yes, <laughs> choreographically. Say that five times fast. Um, so that's really what Jerry Mitchell's genius is. He makes a picture. He makes a picture on stage through dance, and that's why he is who he is. Because his formations, there's no one better. It's like a whole nother level where he's telling a story. And he also tailors it to, like, what's going to look best on Tommy Bracco? What's going to look best on Andy Carl? What's going to look best on everybody? He just knows how to make it come out of the gate perfectly, which is why we changed Ho Welcome to Hollywood so much. Because if you're in a musical, you don't want a slow burn. You want to be hook, line, and sinker from the opening number. You're not waiting until act two to go, oh, gee, that was a good show after all. Oh, you don't want that to happen. You want to be busted out of the gate, you want those horses out of the gate, and you don't want to be able to see them again. So I think that's what Jerry Mitchell's genius is his formations. So you see, so he does have like, you know, welcome to the 60s and all the yeah. hairspray stuff. It's very reminiscent of what we did and what you want in Legally Blonde, in what in Welcome to Hollywood is in this show. He has a specific style and you see it and you recognize it. It's a signature. That's what it is. Allison, he also, you, oh, I was going to say, uh, to add that, he also really understands how to move from one medium to the other, how to take a, a movie right, he's and done bring it multiple. on stage. He really understands the, the art of that. Allison, you look like you wanted to add I, something. I just want to say, you're beautiful the end of Act One. We literally changed over eight to nine times. Oh. And it was, who was it, the three girls? Myself, Renee, and Jillian <laughs> doing different combinations. Every day we come in. Okay, what was, so what oh was it working that he was looking for that, and what was the solution uh, that we have now? Again, again it, goes, it, it just always goes back to story. Because we laugh sometimes. We talk about this all the time. We're like, remember version 2.0 of Beautiful? When we like, you know, had all these like fun movements. Full dancing. Full, full, full dancing. Full out. But he felt like at the end of the day, when he got to sit back and look at the big picture, it didn't serve the story. So what do we have now? So now we have a, I, I like to say it's a delicate balance of, you know, these shop girls just presenting the dresses to Vivian, yeah. along with some some nice dance moves that, again, as he, he always says to us in the show, pedestrian. And I love that word because, again, it goes back to, if you guys are on Hollywood Boulevard, you when you're walking, even though I know you're a dancer, it's not about you being a dancer, it's about you being a person. So we need to make this feel more pedestrian. So that's, again, what it goes back to, you know, version, th there has to be 97 version. Oh, we had a full dance A full dance break. We were in the studio one day and, and Allison was like, I said, we have to do this again. We have to do this again. I'm I like, come on. The last part. Here we go. Yeah. 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 But it's storytelling. It, it's all storytelling it and what really is just natural and, and real. And it's about... Vivian yes. and her dressing. It's not about us twirling. It, it, it just isn't Although it looked good. It, 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 it was really it. fierce. Trust <laughs> yeah. me, everyone, it was fierce. But it, it's about her and getting her ready and making her feel beautiful and celebrating her more than us dancing and over choreographing it. So yeah. I think that's why he said, let I this be I want to see those moment. old videos of what you guys oh, oh my God. Man. My phone, I had to like, I was like, my phone is on overkill because I would just video everything because, you know, then the next day he'd come in and be like, I have a new idea. And I'm like, Oh God, I, I, I have studied to that video, oh no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of signature styles, you know, um, Paula brought up that you have Brian Adams who wrote the music for this and it's, you know, I definitely hear some of heaven in you and I and I hear oh, some of yeah. to you and Rodeo oh, yeah. Drive and, um, you know, I, I'm wondering, do you, do you sing those songs? There's so much flexibility in them. Do you sing them the same way any two nights in a row? I mean, especially you, Orfe. You are wailing and riffing on Rodeo Drive. Never the same. Never the, Never the same. same. I don't tend to do eight shows the same ever. And it's really because I'm trying to flex different muscles in my vocal cords. At least that's what I tell everybody. <laughs> but uh, I, I think with this sort of a score, you have a lot of freedom. Because I'm not in Freedom. You, exactly. Sorry. I'm not. I'm not. I would never ruin the integrity of a group number. I'm not going to go rogue when I'm singing with everybody. But when I have my my rogue oh, drive yes. moment, I get to play in in holes. It's not. I'm never changing the melody of the verses. I won't do that because I would never do something like that. But in the holes, 
And also because the other day somebody asked me if my high note was tracked, and that really pissed me off. So ever since that, I was like, as if I'd ever be tracked. Meaning that they play it that, instead of In other words, it. that it was fake and someone was pressing a button, I was going. So then she sang it so higher. I sang it higher the next night, and then the night after that, I completely changed it up. I was I'll show you tracked. I'll show you tracked. that it's, it, it keeps, it, look, listen, I'm very, very, always very first and foremost concerned with my cast. I care how they feel and how much fun we're having. We're doing this eight times a week, come hell or high water. So most of the times what I do is just to be a, 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 a jerk for my cast. So that when I come off stage, you go, I can't believe you did that. It's to keep it fresh for us, because you guys don't know I'm not doing that eight times a week, unless you come every night. Uh, I don't think you can. But uh, <laughs> literally, it's so they can have fun. It's so we can keep it fresh. So it's so when someone's schlepping in on a matinee and they have a stomach bug, it's so they have a little bit more fun that day. Honestly, I do it because I'm just such a good person. <laughs> <laughs> you're, giving your, you're giving to your friends. You do it for my cast, but I really, the kid that asked me if my note was tracked, I, mm, 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 mm. Well, run, child, run. <laughs> I'm coming for ya. Yeah. Speaking of singing to the rafters, Miss Allison Blackwell. Woo! Woo! So the night I was there, the applause was absolutely thunderous, and, and deservedly so. Have you been surprised by the reaction to that role? To that moment. I have been surprised, but I hear, are you tracked as well? <laughs> From, oh, I know that's that not you. That's Broadway, no, saying, people. We're have, doing it for be, real. Oh, I got that two days ago. Someone was like, is she, is she really singing? Are you singing live? Absolutely. Every, every That night. just means you're flawless. So, so I, I think I'm more surprised because people don't expect the opera in general right. to in, come in out of. In the middle of, of Brian's sport, right? Absolutely. I think that's where I see people when I do gaze through my mask. I see more people being like, what, is this really an opera going on? Oh, okay. Oh, she's singing more. Got it. So I think that's more the surprise that I see more in the audience. It's just, it's a beautiful moment. I think it's, the costumes are gorgeous. The moment is what I honestly feel people are waiting for is that opera scene to see how it's going to work on stage because it's so iconic in the movie. I just remember, actually in the movie they do three arias from La Traviata, not, not two, which I'm doing in the show. But I think yes, people are waiting for that. Just, okay, yeah. But people are waiting for that opera scene, so I feel a sense of responsibility every night, and I just love doing it. I just love doing, doing that, that, that opera scene. It's just, I think it's beautiful. And everyone loves you for it, really. I appreciate That's the yes. truth. I appreciate that. Before we wrap, there is one audience reaction I am supremely curious about. I was there the night that the Marshall family and Miss Julia Roberts was in oh, the audience. It was the best! And she was smiling her face off. I, and, you know, that's a hard thing to come see a role, you know, that you made and, and all those things. But she, I saw her go up on stage with you guys. I'm wondering if you can share what what it was like to go on stage knowing she was there, and and what she said to you guys afterwards. What was that experience of meeting her? Well, some of us didn't know. Oh, I, I know. Everyone, everyone knew when we were